It's a shorter talk. I'm going to speak about thromboembolism coming from the aorta. We start with introduction to atherosclerotic aortic disease, the role of echo in aorta thromboembolism. A few examples, then we'll summarize. Again, the same guidelines, the American Society of Echo guidelines for um, use of echo and evaluation cardiac source of embolism. Atherosclerosis is the most common source of thromboembolism coming from the aorta. We can have, uh, so you have the atherosclerosis disease, then you have a rupture of the, the fibrous cap, and then you have either thromboembolism or cholesterol embolism. Both will give total different clinical scenario. Thromboembolism will give, it's a thrombus break, Large, it will involve large arteries, it is sudden, example of stroke, TIA, renal infarction. But for cholesterol, it's multiple small cholesterol crystals. It will um, keep embolizing over a period of time, small to medium arteries, and you will end with end organ damage and inflammatory response. This is uh, how to differentiate quickly based on clinical picture. So it starts as atheroma, then you have a fibroatheroma, where well, you have a fibrous cap, then it becomes a complex plaque. I want you to remember the word complex plaque. Then you have the surface ulceration and thrombus formation, embolization, etc. We all know the risk factors. We don't need to repeat it again. Typically, you know, as you go, from proximal to distal, as you travel in the aorta, you will have more atherosclerosis. Definition of complex is when you have a surface defect, um, like an ulcer, or there is a hemorrhage, or there is a thrombus, or a mobile uh, mass, and if you don't have any, but you have a very large atheroma. Remember the number four, millimeter. If it is four or more, it is complex. So why we call it complex? Because its association with thromboembolism is higher. It is the one we should be fear of. Okay, role of echo. TEE, actually transthoracic has uh, no much to do in uh, atherosclerosis of the aorta. We'll start with the TEE. You have aortic root, ascending aorta, aortic arch, and descending aorta. We don't um, necessarily picture them or study them in the same order doing the echo for many reasons. So we have the upper esophageal, mid-esophageal, and transgastric and deep transgastric. So this is introduction for those who are not familiar with the transesophageal echo. And then we angulate, we change the angle by a bottom, and also we rotate right and left and flex and anti-flex, etc. So for the aortic root, the best view is mid-esophageal and at an angle of 120 to 140. This is an example of aortic root, a normal aortic root. For the ascending aorta, you know, if I do a T, I keep ascending aorta till the end, the arch and ascending aorta, because it's not comfortable, for the patient. He will start to fight. And uh, yeah, so it's upper esophageal, and the angle is zero for a short axis of ascending aorta, 90 for a, the long axis. Sometimes it's tricky for aortic arch and ascending aorta, because you have the trachea coming in between. So this is example of normal ascending aorta. Short axis to the left, long axis, to the right. Another patient. This is ascending aorta during TE study. You see something, don't you? Yeah, there is something coming and saying hi. Yeah, so this is how, how a mass can, or a uh, thrombus can show. We can see a thrombus here, highly mobile. This is dangerous thrombus. It can embolize like nothing. Attached to a complex atheroma. See the atheroma is irregular, large, looks more than four millimeters, so it has to be removed. So thrombus is nine by 27. So when we do echo 
for cardiac source of embolism after finishing um, PO4 and all that stuff, we have to look at the aorta very carefully. Aortic arch, very tricky. So we do it after we finish from the descending aorta as we are going up, then we rotate to the right side. The long axis here is the opposite at zero degree and short axis is at 90. Of course, it's higher esophageal. So this is an example of aortic arch. You see, the angle to the left, when you see it long axis at 20 degree, you know this is the arch. And short axis here at 100 plus. You see um, a theroma. It's ulcerated and it has a mobile element. So it's complex. A little bit rotated to the other. So it's six millimeter. Okay. After rotation, we see a mass coming to us. We did not expect this. So yeah, it's a thrombus attached to the wall of the aortic arch. Measuring four by 14, it's highly mobile. Patient has to go to OR. I have to remove it. Okay, what about descending aorta? It's the easiest one to do, actually. So you start from lower esophageal and start pulling back and take pictures. Uh, for the short axis, you do it at zero. Long axis is 9 to 100, 90 to 100. Example of a normal aorta. Clean, no atheroma, nothing. This is example of small atheroma. This is what we see every day in normal people. You know, atheroma start to accumulate at adolescence, age 15, 16 people will start having atherosclerosis. Again, smooth, no ulceration, non-complex atheroma, measuring three millimeter. Now we go to more complex atheroma. There is an ulcer here, and it measures four millimeter. So you have to treat aggressively. Another example of a more complex atheroma, irregular surface, and again, measuring more than four millimeters. TTE, does it have a role? Actually, not really, but you may get lucky sometimes and find some uh, diseases. This is the abdominal aorta. Why are you laughing? You remember the case. Okay, so you can see something in, uh, in the abdominal aorta. You're not sure if it is artifact. See, I will tell you, if you cannot explain an artifact and name it, don't call it artifact. You have to learn about artifact. So if you can explain the artifact and the physics behind this artifacts, then go ahead and call it. Otherwise, don't call anything you don't know an artifact. Okay, so we put a color here. Definitely, this is a dissection in the abdominal aorta. And this is the short axis. You can see the, uh, the blood is passing through the small lumen, which is a true lumen, and you have a big lumen. This is another example of abdominal aorta taking from the transthoracic echo. And as you can, do you think this is a complex atheroma? Uh, this is super complex uh, atheroma. So in summary, TEE is the preferred echocardiographic method for evaluation of aortic source of embolism. Aortic plaque may occasionally be seen on transthoracic. However, transthoracic has a low sensitivity. Complex plaque are the plaques associated with stroke and embolic phenomena, defined as thickness equal four millimeter or more if there is a mobile element and if it contains ulceration. Thank you very much.